everyone. Yeah, I kind of worked on a new setup. It's, it's still a work in progress, but you know, I thought I'd kind of give it a little difference from me standing to this wall right here. But there's no time to talk about that, okay? We just had a Animal Crossing Nintendo Direct, and it was really good, giving us a lot of the question, uh, a lot of the answers that we've been looking for, and it still brought a bit of confusion. So today, I thought we'd take a bit of time to actually look at all the new features that have been announced for the games, as well as some returning features and some returning things that are coming from the older games, even New Leaf. And of course, we have to talk about what they're doing with the whole Switch Online and the cloud saves, because it's just a weird situation they've kind of put themselves in. So let's talk about all that. So if you guys are excited, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Let's see if we can actually make it to 250 subscribers soon. That'd be wonderful. But without further ado, let's just go ahead and talk about the Animal Crossing Nintendo Direct. So there was a lot announced in this Animal Crossing Direct. It was a full-length 25-minute Direct, and it was pretty good giving us a lot of new information of some new features that we found, and there's some pretty good features in here. First off, in the very beginning, they did discuss how there's going to be a Northern and Southern Hemisphere, depending on kind of which location you decide to choose. And the main difference is that there seems to appear is the change of season, where in certain times of the year, it'll be a different season. So in the Northern Hemisphere, when it's January, it's gonna be winter, whether if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, Atmosphere, it's going to be summer, which is very nice because it kind of pays attention to what actually happens in the real world And that I, that I think is pretty cool that they're just getting those kind of details into a game and not bad Nintendo That's that's actually pretty smart So now it'll be summer where it's supposed to be summer and winter where it's supposed to be winter But you still get all of the events that happen through the winter events that happen, you know, like for each holiday that happens you will still get all those events occurring. Something new that they also announced is I think you're actually able to have two villagers or two animals that actually join you as residents um, when you begin the game. Uh, but outside of that, you're actually able to choose their location to where you want them to actually put their tent. And later on, it shows that you also decide for other future residents when they're trying to build houses where their locations are as well, which I think is pretty neat because it would be annoying sometimes in New Leaf when just Nook decides to put a random person in a random spot where I don't want them. Like, I build a bunch of roads and then for some reason, Nook just puts one right in the middle of my street, so. Yeah, no more of that. I can finally customize where they want them to move. I don't know if I can move them afterwards. That's kind of a thing that we don't know yet, but the fact that we can choose their location from the start, I mean, that's pretty good because then you can really get creative with how you want like the layout of all the roads and stuff to be. So that's that's a pretty smart thing that they've done and I'm happy they actually, I guess, fixed that because they didn't, they would just kind of reside in a random spot in New Leaf. So I'm happy they finally fixed that. Now, if you did not know, the way you get items or certain items such as the pickaxe or the shovel is through crafting. However, in order to craft them, you need recipes. Now, one of the things they didn't really explain is how you get these recipes. Now, I assume, now I assume you get these recipes maybe through doing the achievements in the mileage program. Maybe you do that and then Nook will be like, oh, okay, well you completed these, so now I can give you a recipe for this. Um, it's just one theory I have, but in, in reality, I don't know, we don't know how we get these um, specific recipes, but basically the recipes allow us to create items, um, which in order we need in order to actually make those items. So it's pretty cool. It kind of goes off like the whole Minecraft setup. Um, Maybe you'll be able to craft them even without a recipe, but who knows? I think you will need the recipe in order to make it. Um, but it's a cool, nice new addition that they've added where you actually get to craft stuff, which is pretty neat. And you can really craft some amazing stuff out of this. I mean, you can really get creative in this game by like upgrading your whole house in the front, like on the outside, where as in New Leaf, the way I decorated was just through a few bushes and some flowers in there. Now you can literally put a fence. So it, it, they took a lot of the aspect from Happy Home Designer and just added it over to this game, which was wonderful because you really get so creative with like the house building, not just on the inside, but now even on the outside. So I'm very excited to see all of this in action. The game now introduces something called Island Tours. What Island Tours is, is basically you go into a random deserted island um, where you will find basically a bunch of materials and other insects um, and even fish where you could basically just rack up on all that on that deserted island to take back with you to your own island. And you might find some special guests also there either on for a visit and you can probably maybe invite them over to your own island which would honestly be pretty cool and would make a lot of sense because then it would be kind of sad that 
I can't bring any 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 people that I see on these random islands over. I just they're just there for display. That'd be horrible. But I'm pretty sure you'll be able to bring them over to your town. The resident service center, which is the place where you go talk to Nook about whether, you know, money things, or you can buy certain items and then craft some stuff in there. Uh, it will be upgraded as you continue your little Animal Crossing adventure in the island. Basically, it'll turn into like a town hall-like kind of building where you will also find Isabel, who will also contribute her kind of tasks into the island, which is pretty cool. I think, honestly, everyone was just happy that Isabel is back. I think we kind of knew this already, like there was a commercial that showed Isabel, so I assume she was already coming, but hey, Isabel's back and that's actually pretty awesome, so good, good to see that she has a role, a continuing role. And it's nice to see that maybe these buildings will be able to be upgradable. Not sure if you can like change the way they look, kind of like how you were able to in the New Leaf game, but hey, I like seeing that you can turn your deserted island into something like a huge tourist attraction basically, so that's pretty cool. There are some new characters that have been added that have basically become replacements to the predecessor. For example, we have CJ who is now in charge of the fishing tourney, we have Flick who is now in charge of the bug off, and Daisy May who is now in charge of selling and buying turnips. So some brand new characters that we've come to see, you know, they do replace a couple some, well to be honest I only remember Joan who was the old turnip person. <laughs> I don't remember who was in charge of the bug or the fishing contest, but Hey, it's nice to see some refreshing faces, and who knows, I think we might be able to see them in the game, maybe just as tourists or something, or maybe they even move in, that would be pretty cool. But hey, some new faces, always welcoming. We all kind of knew bridges were coming back, so they confirmed that you can construct bridges once again. But now you can also construct slopes, which is pretty cool, because it allows you to actually go up to the second levels of certain land, which is pretty nice in general to be able to go even higher than the main ground so that's pretty neat little thing they've added so that you're not always constantly using the ladder which is also used to go up there but you know now you have an actual path to get up there and the way you're able to construct these is through the designer construction program which is basically how you're able to construct different things out in the overworld. So for example, not only can you just build bridges and slopes, but you can also adjust where you want the paths to be, what kind of, what you want the paths to be out of. You can also adjust how the dirt kind of, the terrain kind of is. You can change the shape, you can change how much of a cliff you want, and you can make waterfalls, which is all really cool, like how creative you can really get with this. So really nice things that you can have. It really allows you to get so creative with a lot of things that you can do. And honestly, like from the trailers, this all just looks beautiful. However, um, it, it does require a little bit of time in order to actually unlock this. So you will have to play for quite a while, but after you get that, honestly, you basically just let your creativity go wild because you can build so much with this. So very nice addition that they've added. All right, so that's all the new features that I'll cover for right here. Let's talk about some returning features that are coming from older games, specifically from New Leaf. A lot of these are just continuations from New Leaf or characters that have been in New Leaf or from the previous games. So let's go ahead and talk about them. First off, something that's really cool and I'm happy to see back, although we don't know if we can actually make tiles out of them, but we do know custom designs are back. We can be able to customize different designs, whether it's for a shirt or bed sheets, or I think even a backpack. Um, so you could really get creative with these custom designs, which you could make on your own, just using like a pixel kind of method. And if you have Animal Crossing New Leaf and you made a design right there, you can actually scan the QR code for that design using the Nintendo Switch Online app. I never thought I'd be happy for that app, but yes, it has a use. You can actually scan the QR code. And from that scan, you'll be able to transfer that design over to New Horizons, which that itself, like again, I didn't think Switch Online especially the app, would get something pretty right. I mean, to be able to scan it and then just take it over to the new games, that's pretty cool. Like, there's some cool scans that I was able to get from New Leaf that I'd be happy to put over into New, um, new Horizons. Now, the only thing I don't know is if we can use these custom designs for, like, tiles, like, on the ground. Kind of like how I did a lot of my roads since we weren't able to make dirt roads or brick roads, kind of like before. So it'll be interesting to see if that all works, but hey, I mean, that's still pretty cool to be able to bring in designs from the older games over to the newer games. So 
yeah, be sure to see a lot of those previous designs just make it make their way back to New Horizons. Well, what do you know? Scorpion, wasps, and tarantulas are back in the game. The only main things that basically cause you pain other than the fact that I need financial support because I'm in debt again. But hey, I'm happy they're back and honestly, I'm ready to get murdered by this. I mean, literally, this dude died because of a wasp. You're telling me this game's supposed to be rated E? Many, if not all, the home design features for um, Happy Home Designer are making a return, kind of like how they added them into New Leaf. Uh, but this time you can actually, you know, they're in New Horizons, which is pretty cool because a lot of those things from Happy Home Designer were very handy for making houses. You were able to move a bunch of objects at the same time. You can shift the angle of the camera. So it's really nice to be able to just be doing all this again now on the New Horizons game. So it's really nice that they took a lot of the really good aspects that they got from new um, from Happy Home Designer. And uh, basically they're just developing that and then continuing it on over to the new game. Now it's official that we have a bunch of buildings from previous games, specifically New Leaf, coming back over to the New Horizons game. For example, the museum is making a return and I'll just have to say it is beautiful. We also have Nook's Cranny, which is making a return, the Able Sisters, and the campsite basically where you can find other animals to be able to invite over to your town. Honestly, it's pretty cool to see a bunch of these things. Now, my only question is, are they upgradable? Now, the only one that really can get upgraded, I guess, would be Nook's Cranny. You know, how it was able to upgrade to the TNT Mar and then just keep upgrading all the way up. I don't know if we'll be able to do that, but it would be nice to have that because Nook's Cranny itself is very small and doesn't really have much, so. Hopefully it is upgradable. It's honestly the only thing that can be upgraded out of all these buildings. I mean, I guess the museum, like you could have that second floor again, but uh, I, I don't think that's really gonna happen. So we'll just have to wait and see if we can actually upgrade the the, T, uh, the TN Nook's Cranny. I keep forgetting what it's called. We'll just have to wait and see if we can actually upgrade Nook's Cranny. But until then, I'm just happy these buildings are back and the characters who reside in them are all Pretty much back. Not only the characters from those buildings are coming back, but we're actually getting a lot of past characters that are returning to the game. So for example, we have Gulliver, who will still be clueless on a beach. We have Label, who I guess is on her own this time. We also have Harvey, Celeste, Kix, and Sahara. Basically, Celeste, we know she gives you a magic wand or like gives you advice on how to use a magic wand. But as for Kix and Sahara, I assume they're basically just roaming travelers. Uh, traveling salesmen, that's what I meant to say, who are going to basically sell you something. Um, for example, Kix will actually sell you some shoes and Sahara will probably sell you some floors and some wallpapers, which is pretty cool because honestly they sell some pretty neat stuff. But in general, it's just nice to see all these characters make a comeback into the new games. It would be nice and I don't know if this will happen because... I mean, they kind of are roaming characters, but it would be nice if they were able to be part of the upgrades of these buildings, like Celeste going back to the museum and having her second floor, or Kix having his own store, you know. Would be nice to see these kind of things, but I don't think they probably will. I mean, I just honestly think they'll just probably be roaming salesmen, but hey, I mean, the fact that they're back is pretty cool. And that's it for basically the major things that they've added, the major features that they've kind of added to the games. Now, I might have missed a few things, such as the fact that you can actually use a ladder to climb up things. I mean, that's pretty cool. Like. That's really cool. And the fact that you can pull vault, which we kind of knew from like a while back, but hey, you can do all these kind of things. But let's talk about real quick about the multiplayer and the Switch Online, specifically like what they're doing with the whole cloud saves. Now for multiplayer, it's pretty simple. You can have up to eight people in one single Switch file of Animal Crossing New Horizons, which means basically eight different profiles are allowed to be on that one specific island. Kind of like with the previous games, you won't be able to make your own island. You're all just gonna reside on one specific island, which honestly is not a bad thing because then you can all just kind of play together. and. It is pretty cool. However, when you wanna do multiplayer on the same console using a bunch of Joy-Cons or Pro Controllers, um, it, it's gonna be a little rough. You kinda of had to stick together. Now there's a leader and then there are the followers, but yeah, like I said, you have to stick together kinda of doing things all in a group. You can't really separate, which I guess makes sense because a split screen on Animal Crossing would be probably horrible just cause it'd be very small unless you have a huge, gigantic television, then it's not so bad, but Honestly, I don't even own that. So a split screen four ways for an Animal Crossing game would kind of be a little weird, but it's still kind of disappointing that you have to kind of be in a group to be able to do stuff. I mean, it's not a bad thing, but it's not, it's not 
convenient for some people. But hey, that's that, that's basically how they set it all up. Um, and you can only have one island per uh, Nintendo Switch, which means if you have a Switch Lite, you're going to have a completely different island compared to like if you're just using a Switch or whatever. Basically, each Switch has its own island. Now, when it comes to online play, you actually are allowed to bring up quite a couple people over to your town. The cool thing that they've added for the online play, which is thankfully they've actually done this, is to stop trolls. So if people come to your town, whether it's through a code or they just randomly find you for some reason, um, they cannot use some of the specific items that'll basically could be used to destroy your whole island, like pickaxes and shovels. So, or they just start making random holes on the ground, or they start cutting down your special trees. Yeah, they can't do any of that, which is pretty cool because then, you know, no more trolls, stop annoying my town, get out if you don't like it. But you might be wondering, well, what if I want them to do that kind of stuff? Well, don't worry, all you have to do is basically just make them on your best friends list for the game. And basically they can go ahead and use shovels and pickaxes all they want until you probably remove that. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have a struggle. No one, one of my friends is getting the game and the moment I make him a best friend, he's gonna cut down all my trees. Oh, we're not best friends anymore. <laughs> yeah, basically you make people best friends. They can use the items. If they're not on your best friends list, they can't use those items, which honestly, thank you because you understand the pain that happens on Animal Crossing Online. Thank you so much. Now onto the Switch Online service, which is a big pain. You need to switch online to go online, which is pretty, pretty straightforward. However, there's no cloud saves. You can't use cloud saves in the game. Now the only way you can actually back up your game in the case of something happening to your Nintendo Switch, well, you're basically not backing it up. You're just kind of transferring it. They're going to add a specific transfer tool basically for Animal Crossing New Horizons. And it is unclear how it's working because even their own descriptions and disclaimers are just kind of conflicting everything where there's a disclaimer that you can, this only applies to one transfer per switch, which what does that even mean? I mean, I guess if you're transferring it, but does that mean like when you transfer your data, you still have it on that switch itself? I don't know. Uh, it's, a, it's a feature that'll be coming out in the future. I don't know how long in the future, but honestly, Nintendo just kind of put this on themselves because all you have to do is just activate cloud saves and you're done. That's it. Just put cloud saves and then you have no problems at all. Like honestly, who cares about cheating on an Animal Crossing game? It's Animal Crossing. I don't care if that island over there has a billion bells. Honestly, Nintendo, it's not even a competitive game. It's just a game for fun. Let people have fun and let it be convenient by having the online, you know, cloud save. Whatever. <laughs> Nintendo, I don't know what happens in Nintendo, but man, they suck when it comes to their online service. <laughs> and finally, they did add on to their app. Basically, you know, you can scan your QR codes for the customizable design, which you can take over to from New Leaf over to New Horizons, which that itself is pretty cool, but honestly, probably the only main feature I'd probably ever use it on because all the other features are pretty basic and honestly like you could just do voice chat and you can message them so that you can actually see it on the screen which honestly is just kind of stupid just go on discord join an animal crossing discord and you can voice chat and basically text chat all at once all at once and it's so convenient anyways if you like actually send a message on Animal Crossing, there's a character limit. You basically can't send a huge long sentence. It's not gonna allow, it's kind of like, you can only send like short sentences. So just, just download Discord and do that. Other than that, why are you getting the app except for just to transfer your designs? Like, why does this app exist? Japan, what are you doing to us? But yeah. <sighs> That was my rant for the day. Switch Online just triggers me. <laughs> One day I'll make another video on the Switch Online, but not today. But anyway, that's it for this video. Basically, those were a lot of the main features that they talked about in the Animal Crossing Direct. And I get the feeling it's not the only Direct that's going to be happening this month. We might be getting another Direct happening on basically probably the 27th, which is Pokemon Day here in America. So, hey. Another Nintendo Direct, that would be pretty awesome. But until we get confirmation of that, that is basically all we have for this video. 
So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for sticking around. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Let's see if we can reach 250 pretty soon. And hit the bell if you haven't already so you get notified when the next video comes out. Also, I am streaming on Twitch every Saturday. Definitely worth a watch. So go ahead and follow links in the description. And I will be streaming Animal Crossing the day it comes out, which means Friday. So. Amazon, don't mess up my order. But yeah, we will be streaming Animal Crossing New Horizons on the day that it comes out. So definitely be sure to check out my Twitch for that. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.